Hell hath no fury like a fisher's scorn. Yes, indeed. It's a sentiment West Aussie fishers are all too familiar with at the moment. It's thanks to a new quota system for fishing charters recently unveiled by the state government. They're trying to create more sustainable fisheries, which is a worthy goal. Well, there's plenty more fish in the sea. As part of that plan, charter operators get tags based on their average catch for the past five years of demersal species like your pink snapper and your jewfish. The more tags you have, the more fish you can catch starting from July 1. Now you behave yourself, all right? And if you're caught by fisheries bringing home a restricted fish species without a tag, well, you won't be the one that got away. I'll give you that one for life, Your Honour. What if you didn't get any tags? Well, those poor bastards face a very uncertain future. The government gave out 6,000 tags to 21 operators. Which sounds OK until you learn there's 99 out there. So don't tell anyone, folks. Wreckfish West says that leaves 78 charter fishing licence holders without fishing tags in the West Coast bioregion, which is the zone between Kalbarri and Augusta, and also means they don't have a viable business model going forward. Seems a bit rough. Yeah, well, the government clearly knows there's some truth to that. It's offering $500,000 in small grants to help these operators adapt to the new reality. But if the latest twist in this ongoing stoush is anything to go by, this new reality is going to get a little weird. Yibbity yibbity folks, have we got some fishing for you. Just like tossing Burley behind a dinghy, Fisheries Minister Don Punch has thrown a new addition to the quota policy out there in the hope he can hook charter operators. Punch's plan will allow operators without tags to still offer fishers the chance to catch as many prized pinkies and ball chin gropers as they can on one condition. Which is... It's all got to be eaten before the boat makes it back to dry land. What? Yeah, to be honest, it sounds more like a bizarre punishment. Or what happens when you cross fishing and sizzler? Oh, gluttony. And who decides how much of the fish has to be eaten? A fisheries officer is going to be checking to make sure everyone's plate is clean before they let them off the boat? It doesn't make any sense. It really doesn't. The catch and cook policy is currently in effect in the Abrolhos Islands and will be reviewed after 12 months. In theory, it could give charter operators a chance to offer a new foodie tourism option, combining the fresher seafood dining with the chance to see your meal killed in front of you. Everything went wrong after that. Some might argue all meat eaters should see their dinner killed in front of them before criticising fishers for doing it, but this is about more than morality. It's about sustainability. See you later, mate. I think you cost me me job. See ya. And on this score, the science is pretty clear. Reduce the catch and you end up with more fish in the ocean. And more fish means a future where anglers can enjoy the activity they love. It's not always smooth sailing in the deep blue. Mm. A huge air and sea search was launched to find five people after their tiny submarine disappeared nearly two hours into a dive to explore the wreck of the Titanic, about 700 k's off the coast of Newfoundland. Firstly, I didn't even know you could do this as a tourism experience, so thanks for nothing, TripAdvisor. But secondly, taking a five-person sub 4K under the ocean that. It's truly the stuff of claustrophobic nightmares. It is indeed, but it was a dream come true for one of the passengers, British billionaire Hamish Harding. Harding, an aviator and explorer, apparently shelled out 365000 bucks for his seat on the Titan sub, which is owned and operated by a company called Oceangate. And it's not his first rodeo. In 2021, he broke a couple of Guinness World Records by diving in a two-man sub to the deepest point of the Mariana Trench. Last year, Harding spent a lot more than he did on the Titan dive to score a seat on Jeff Bezos's wildly phallic-shaped rocket, the New Shepard. More money than sense, you might be thinking, but there's a bit more to it than that. At various points in human history, someone was the first to do something that no one else thought was possible. Set foot on the moon, climb Mount Everest, or reach the deepest point in the ocean. But modern life has diminished these achievements and lulled us into a false sense of security around just how dangerous they really are. Because make no mistake, taking a tiny sub 4,000 metres under the ocean is dangerous. Climbing Mount Everest is dangerous. Space tourism is dangerous. And when you do something dangerous... It could always go wrong. Yeah, and Harding knew that before he set foot on the Titan. And he did it anyway. That's the appeal of pushing the boundaries. I'm Ben O'Shea. For more up late, click the subscribe button below.